let's jump right into today's webinar. Excuse me, you said what? Brought to you today by the Internet Marketing Specialist designation and Active Rain, bringing us the support today that we are speaking on behalf of the Active Rain Network as well. And we are glad that you are all here to join us. You can find out more about the Internet Marketing Specialist designation at imsd.net and our fan page, which is facebook.com slash designation. Let me tell you a little bit about what IMSD is for those of you who do not know about the Internet Marketing Specialist designation. IMSD is a program that was put together based on Ben Kinney's models and systems. You've heard of this guy before. He has created an Internet business in the world of real estate that everybody wants a piece of. So this was a way for us to be able to share with you the models, the systems, the tools, the tips, the tricks, the strategies that Ben Kinney is using for his team. We've broken it down into eight core classes plus multiple bonus sessions to earn your Internet Marketing Specialist designation. You can see those classes right here. We're not here, though, as a sales pitch for that. We're here to talk about, excuse me, you said what? So I wanted to make sure, though, that you knew a little bit about IMSD and how you could find out some more. We'll talk about that as we go through the call. But now I would like to bring on our featured speaker for today. He's a friend to all, big and tall, small, short, fuzzy, whatever you might be. He's Ben Kinney. He's out there. He's bringing you guys more and more stuff because Ben has always believed if he just throws it out there and gives it to you, it's going to force him to get better. And as Ben gets better at what he's doing, he just keeps bringing it to all of us, giving the opportunity to share. So I want to thank you for taking this hour and joining us. And Ben, good morning. So excuse me, you said what is the conversation of the day? We are going to go through a process where we discuss what you should say and what you shouldn't say in about every situation that I could think of that I could squeeze into a one-hour call. We're going to talk about the scripts and dialogues that you use on a variety of different lead sources. First of all, I want to go through what I call the three real estate success principles. I believe that there's only three things that determine if a real estate agent will be successful or will fail in his profession, therefore applying for jobs at my favorite store in the world, which is Best Buy. So if you want to stay in real estate and be successful in real estate, it's pretty simple. All I'm asking is for you to try to do three things and try to do these three things very well. In fact, at a recent conference, a John Maxwell event, he said there's only two ways to do anything, right and over. Right and over. Get that, Chad? To either do it right or you do it, it over. I retweeted it when you sent it because I thought that was pretty brilliant. Well, see, the, the problem with these webinars is that I say something funny or I think it's funny that nobody's laughed, which is kind of traditionally how things work with me anyway. I say something that nobody laughs, but I wish that you had that button that they have on the sitcoms where you put in the fake laughs in the background. Can you make that happen? <laughs> <laughs> now you sound like Santa Claus killing me. Okay, the three real estate success principles. Number one, say the right thing. If you say the right thing, you're going to be successful. Let's talk about saying the right thing. Now, saying the right thing is interesting because saying the right thing really determines is determined by who you're talking to. Because saying the right thing to one person may not be so good to say something to the next person because they may not communicate in the same manner as you do. Since I've been beaten into this uh, personality profile mindset, I always try to think of who I'm speaking to and try to make the fastest guess of what type of person I'm talking to. Is that person a D, an I, an S, or a C? This is a personality profile test called the DIST test. The DIST test allows us to see what type of personality we're dealing with. And what I found is that different personalities prefer different forms of communication. For instance, the high D individual will prefer to have your responses fast and to the point. They don't want you to take a whole lot of time telling stories. They don't want to hear about your family, your kids. They don't want you to spend a whole lot of time building relationships. They just want you to get to the point. There's nothing faster that you could say. Don't say 15 words when you can say it in three. The high D is efficiency is one of the most important things to them. They need you to respect their time. Now, the high I. They don't even care what you say. They're just there and they want to have fun. 
they want to make sure that you like them and they like you. And the best way for them to like you is for you to spend a lot of time listening to what they have to say. You want to ask questions. They're going to end the conversation. You're going to say four things. You're going to ask them four questions. At the end, they're going to say, oh, I love talking to you because they love talking about themselves. The high eyes, they're the people in the party that everybody knows. They walk into the party and they start screaming, hi, everybody. I'm here. I'm here. Did everybody notice what I got here? Because everybody loves them and they love being noticed. Now, the people that are high S, the high S is they like security and safety. When you're talking to these individuals, you want to make sure that you let them know that everything's going to be okay. You're going to be thorough and you're going to take care of everything. And they don't have to worry about a single thing. They're in for the long-term relationship. They want to know that they're getting some stability in their life, that everything's going to be fine and dandy. Now we're left with the last person. The last person is the high C. The high C doesn't care what you say as long as you can prove it. They want to know that you have a calculator in hand and you have stats to back it up. They want the numbers, the stats, the information. They want to know everything can be proven. The high C's are incredibly hard to deal with, and you have to be incredibly accurate. So make sure when you're speaking to a high C, you use a lot of numbers, you lose, use a lot of facts, and a lot of stats. That will motivate them to make the right decision. Once you identify the personality profile of the person you're dealing with, you might want to spend some time listening to how they speak. I prefer to use this method called mirror and match. Mirror and match allows me to mirror and match different things that the person I'm speaking to is doing. The number one, I'm going to try to match their tone and their volume. If they're speaking really loud, I'm going to probably match, match the loud, volume, so on. If they're gruff and to the point, I'm going to do the same thing. If they're using a different form of vocabulary, I'll try to match that. I'm talking to a younger person, and they're saying, you know, what's up, dude? I'm like, no, what's up, dude? I'm going to match the words right back to them. If they're talking really fast, I might speed up. If they're talking really slow, I'm going to slow my voice down. I remember when my job as a cable guy, we had to make a lot of calls every day. I made two to 300 cold calls, outgoing telemarketing calls a day. And my assistant would always laugh. She's like, I never knew who was on the other side of the cubicle because when you called, your voice changed so much. And she could always tell who I was talking to because if I got an elderly person, you know, like my grandma on the phone, I was talking, I'd have a very soft voice. I, I was what they called a gentleman. If I got a builder, developer on the phone, I was very to the point and I was direct and gruff and my volume was stern and he knew that I meant business. If I had a younger guy on the phone, I was just kind of fun, having fun, joking around, using some slander so to speak. I was mirroring and matching my audience. After saying the right thing, it's important that we say it enough times. I know that if I say a certain thing correctly enough times, I will get a certain amount of results. In my business, if I dial 52 canceled expires, I end up talking to 12 to 13 people, which ends up getting me at least one listing appointment. I know that 9 out of 10 listing appointments I go on will end up listing with me because I say the same exact thing every single time. The mathematical uh, breakdown of our real estate lead conversion, lead generation process guarantees success. I just know that if I go out there and I say it enough times, we will become successful. The third thing is, do we have enough people to say it to? Now, you could be saying the right things, and you could be saying it enough times, maybe, but you might just not have enough people to dial or enough leads to work or a big enough database. So we're going to try to talk about all three, all three of these items today as we go through some scripts and dialogues, some things that you guys would like to... Uh, discuss, so feel free to throw that on the fan page, um, about what scripts and dialogues you want to make sure we cover. So if I get to the end, Chad will be looking through that list and saying, hey, uh, Ben, we didn't talk about this script, or how would you handle this objection? And we'll throw some things back and forth. We'll try to have some fun today. The National Association of Realtors does a study every single year that says where buyers found the actual home that they purchased. This is important, one, because it's our fiduciary duty to market our properties effectively so that we can expose it to the most amount of buyers, therefore selling it for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. That is our fiduciary duty to sellers. If we understand this graph and we market effectively, 
we solve the number three problem is we don't have enough people to say it to because the marketing of the listings that we have will generate enough listings for us to work. This chart that the National Association of Realtors gives us says that 38% of all transactions, all homes sold last year, came because of a real estate agent like myself said that you should go see property at 1234 Main Street. Now this number fluctuates, but it's been as high as 50, 60, 70% you know, at one point in time, where now it's dropping. But it's still nearly one third of all transactions happen because a real estate agent like ourselves say you should go see a property. Because that number is so big, you need to have a good system in place to market your properties to other real estate agents. I'm talking about email campaigns, flyer campaigns, brokers open, standing up at your office, giving the pitch, using the right scripts to get people motivated, other agents to share your property with potential buyers. The next thing that we learned is that 37% of all transactions came because a buyer saw the actual property first from the internet. This is massive. This is so important that over one-third of all buyers found the actual home that they purchase online. We need to make sure that we have a plan in place to effectively market our properties via the Internet. Now, of course, I've divided those up into five different buckets that you learned about in IMSD, where I believe you know, buyers actually go online, brokerage websites, classified services, national portals, search engines, and social media. And if you master those five topics, which is what IMSD really covers, then you will effectively market your listings to all the buyers out there. And as we go through the chart, you know, 11% of all uh, transactions came because a buyer saw a yard sign or a flyer. Uh, some of them were accidental. The neighbors or friends or networking found it. Some were from builders. And then the last one, of course, is print. And if we took all the real estate publications, newspapers, magazines, and we stacked them on top of each other, that would result in only 2% of the sales, which I think is hilarious because most agents spent 80 to 90% of their business on something that resulted in just 2% of the sales. For those of you that are going to start thinking, gosh, I wish I could write a little faster because Ben is sharing a whole lot of scripts with us today, I just want to uh, let you know that we'll be sending out the entire webinar to everybody who registered for this call so you can re-listen to the scripts. And of course, all these scripts are available on the IMSD Members Benefits page as well. So let's talk about the goals of saying the right thing. Now, we have two goals specifically. Number one is our goals of saying the right things are to convert leads into actual appointments, to convert the leads, the different people, into actual closings and actual conversations with people. The second goal is to motivate our existing clients either to price it correctly or to make it an offer. And we need to come up with ways to motivate buyers and to motivate sellers. Our goal is to help buyers get into homes and help sellers sell for the most amount of money. In doing so, you're going to have to have some talking points that you can use to motivate both parties. I want to talk about motivating buyers. Motivating buyers is one of these challenges because they're scared. They don't understand what's going on in the economy. They get a lot of mixed messages from the media. Uh, their friends and family always have an opinion of should they buy or shouldn't they buy. It's important that we have the talking points in place to get these buyers off the fence, so to speak. The talking points that we use with buyers are, one, interest rates, two, home prices, three, inventory, four, we're going to try to find some emotional and personal reasons why it's a good idea for them to buy. We'll kind of talk through some scripts that we use when motivating buyers and some facts that you can use when talking to such clients to get them more excited about buying today. And throughout the entire call today, I'll be bringing Chad on and off the call, and we'll be having conversations if need be and so on. Uh, for this particular one, let's just talk about interest rates. Here's a fact. Interest rates are as low as they've been in the last 20 to 30 years. Of course, we saw low interest rates four or five years ago, but those were fixed for three years, five years, seven years. That, what's, that is what got us into this mess that we're in today. Interest rates today, 
and 4%, 3 and 3 quarters, fixed for 30 years. There's never been a cheaper time to buy using banks' money than today. Second thing is home prices. Nationally speaking, the average home prices dropped to levels that they were in 2003. 2003, if you remember, was before the big boom. They can buy a home now for cheaper than they could eight or nine years ago. Number three, inventory. They have more choices than they could ever had. When they were fighting over two or three homes six, seven years ago, now they have a choice of 100. Four, there's some personal reasons that may motivate people to be buying now. Maybe they always dreamed of owning a home. Maybe the tax write-offs are a huge benefit for them. Maybe they want a place where their kids can play in the backyard. You need to take the time to understand what buying a home means to your clients. For the most, you know, for the most part, emotional reasons will drive buyers to actually make the purchase of the properties that you're showing. You just have to find it and expose it. People can't argue with the emotional reasons of buying or selling. For instance, I want to buy a home so I can be closer to my grandkids. I want to buy a home uh, so I don't have to take care of as large of a yard because I'm worried about my husband taking care of a large piece of property. I want to buy a home because I want to downsize so we don't have to spend as much money so we can retire earlier. When you start having these conversations, it starts hitting home with them. And when they tell me that, I repeat it back to them later in the conversation. Let me ask you a question. Earlier today, you said you were interested in selling your home because you wanted to be closer to your grandkids. How old are your grandkids today? Well, they're four or five. How important is it that you're next to your grandkids when they're four or five years old? Well, it's very important. Well, I would imagine that it would be. One of the reasons I think would be because things like birthday parties and Christmas are so much more fun when they're four or five years old. By the time they get to their teens, they're no fun at all. They're kind of punk kids. You want to enjoy the beautiful times, the amazing times with your grandkids. And you start talking about this difference of them selling for $10,000 more or less, and you start putting the value to, is $10,000 really worth you not being around your grandkids for the next couple of years? And they look at each other, and they make the right decision. When you roll all these things up in these talking points, and you have this one conversation, and you meet somebody in the elevator at the urinal, and you're in the bathroom, and somebody's having this conversation with you, and they say, is today a great time to buy? You say, are you kidding me? I've never seen a perfect storm like this. This is the greatest opportunity to buy a home that I've ever seen. Can I tell you why? One, interest rates are as low as they've been in the last 20 to 30 years, which means money is cheap and your payments will be less. Number two, home prices are lower than they were during the boom. They're as low as they were in 2002, 2003 nationwide. Thirdly, there are more homes for you to choose from than ever. There are so many options where, you know, five or six years ago, I would show a home, a home, three or four homes to a buyer, and they had to choose one of those three, and they end up fighting with 50 people over those three homes. Now you have a choice of 100. I've never seen a better opportunity for you to go out there, not to mention you can jump on some good opportunities, some good deals, like bank homes, foreclosures, and short sale properties. This is an awesome opportunity if you're interested in getting a good deal, keeping your payment low, and making some money in the future through appreciation. Is that you? Of course, they're going to answer that question correctly. When we're talking about buyers, we got to use scripts throughout the entire process. I'm talking about a script to convert an internet lead to an appointment a script to get a buyer to write an offer on a home that we know they love, and a script once they wrote the offer to generate more business from them and to keep them through the process. I want to talk about buyer communication, and I'll be kind of weaving in scripts and dialogues throughout the entire process. Buyer communication starts uh, in this particular system, this particular model, once we have a written offer. On my team, once an offer is written, Within 24 hours, they get an intro call from one of our staff and um, offering personal contact information to our office and, and telling them how excited they are to buy a great home and see if there's anything they need. They'll get a handwritten written note from our staff or from myself with a couple of business cards in it. Within three days, they'll get a, a letter stating these are the timelines when you have to have your inspections, your financing. Uh, you know, call for your homeowner's insurance, go through all the little things that have to get done in a transaction. By two weeks, they're going to get a final closing checklist, 
and at the end we're going to start a past client campaign after it actually closes. The mistake that real estate agents make all the time is they wait to start asking for referrals and generating business at the end once they've actually closed the transaction. When I know the best time to generate referrals, to generate additional business from clients, is not after they bought the home. After they bought the home, they stop talking about it. It's while they're going through the process. They're walking around their office, like, oh, I've been looking for homes. And inevitably, they're going to run across somebody else that says, I'm looking for a home. And they start having this relating conversation. Well, if you don't take the time to ask, and ask for your clients to refer you to other people, they're not going to take the time to do it. They aren't even going to think that that's how your business works. So right off the bat, when I'm driving around the car with them showing homes, I'm going to be asking for business. And then especially when I write the offer, I'm going to be using one simple script. It's going to be, you know, now that we've done, we're completed writing this offer, I'm going to submit it right away. Would it be okay if I asked you a quick favor? You may not know this, but a lot of my business is done through referral from great clients like yourself. And I have this program in place where you, if you refer me anybody that's looking to buy or sell real estate and they close prior to your transaction being completed, I will credit you the cost of your entire home inspection. Who is it that you know right now that might be interested in buying or selling? Maybe somebody at work, somebody at church, anybody? And they just sit there, and they usually, by the end of the conversation, they come up with one or two people that they know have been trying to sell, or they're thinking about buying, or thinking about selling, because they're like super jacked to receive a little bit of a discount on their home inspection. That's awesome. And they get that credit at, at closing, of course. At the end of the closing, my conversation is the same thing. I so much love, love doing business with you. You are just the type of people that I enjoy working with. Let me ask you a question. Since I like doing business with you, the odds are I'm going to love doing business with your friends and family. Do you know anybody else, kind of your personality types that I enjoy working with, who would think about buying or selling? If they say no, that's completely okay. What I know is the National Association of Realtors says that on average people run across five people a year that are thinking about buying or selling. And I would just like an opportunity to interview for that position if any of your friends and family were thinking about buying or selling real estate. The next thing we need to think about is how do we motivate our sellers? Chad, are you on the call with me today? I am, of course, Ben. Are you seeing the uh, motivating seller slide? I am. Okay, very well. The next thing we've got to do is figure out how do we motivate sellers. We motivate sellers along the same kind of lines of we're going to use talking points. We're going to use seasonality. We're going to talk about what happens during the summer and during the winter and during the spring. We're going to use competition. We're going to talk about what their neighbors are selling for and what the banks are selling their properties for and what the builders are selling for. We're going to talk about market stats. That will help them realize really what's going on. And we're going to try to find the emotional and personal reason why they're selling. I'll share a couple scripts with you real quick that are uh, extremely effective. One is seasonality. Inevitably somebody told all sellers out there that they should put their home on the market in the spring. And for whatever reason that's kind of stuck with a lot of people, but what ends up happening is that everybody puts their home on the market in the spring, which means there's more competition. So the script that I use is, here's what I found. Although the spring is a great time to sell a home, there's a lot of people that also believe that, which means a lot of homes go on the market. And let me ask you a question. Do you think there being more competition on the market will make the value of your home go up or go down? Usually they think about it for a second. They said, well, if I have to compete against more people, I'd probably have to lower my price. And I said, exactly. That's why having your home on the market in the winter and in the early spring and in the fall is so important because a lot of homes come off the market you have less people to compete with. You may not be getting the most amount of showings, but the people that are looking during the winter, the fall, and early spring, they are serious buyers. And those are the people that I want walking through your house. Different scripts and dialogues that we can use is talk about competition. The competition selling points would be, you know, I know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that you're not desperate to sell, 
but you're competing against people that are motivated, that are desperate to sell. I'm talking about desperate banks, desperate builders, desperate sellers that need to sell right away because they're relocating. It's important that we understand that although you're not extremely motivated, that other people are. And for us to compete in this market, we need to make sure that we stay with the price and what the average sellers are doing. I don't want to sell your home for the least amount of money. I want you to get the most amount of money. Here's what I know to be true. Most likely today, based on the stats for the last three or four years, that the home price I tell you today is going to be greater than the home price I would tell you in three, four, five, or six months. Because overall, in our state, prices are declining. Given them the, the idea that I know I'm telling you a bad price today, but the price I'm going to tell you in six months is going to be worse, allows them to realize, oh, I get it. He's looking out for my best interest. He really wants me to help sell my home for the most amount of money, which is true. There's nothing better for me than helping somebody sell their house for more money than what the competition is selling for right now. Our communication with sellers is extremely important because the scripts and dialogues that we use allow us to generate referrals the entire during the entire process. Our seller communications start with uh, right away when we on the listing appointment, when I'm done getting the listing paperwork signed, I ask for referrals. Within a day of getting the property listed, they get an intro call from my staff and a handwritten note telling them that we appreciate referrals and asking if there's anything we can do for them. Day seven, they get a satisfaction report uh, showing a list of all the things we've already done to market their property. We also start the Lowe's campaign. If you guys haven't heard of this, go to the Lowe'sRealtorBenefits.com and you can set up a campaign where they'll send emails and postcards on your behalf that give your clients discounts and ideas on how to get their home ready to sell and sold for the most amount of money. It's a fantastic value-added thing that you can send for no cost. Day 30, we're going to send our traffic report, how many showings, how many calls, how many web inquiries, how many views, how many offers, and we're going to give a price reduction recommendation. After that, of course, we have ongoing communication, and our commitment to our clients is that we communicate on once a week via call. Also, we'll send an email on a weekly basis, a lot of which is automated with the properties that just came on the market and the properties that just sold, allowing them to keep up to date with what's going on. Let's jump out of buyers and sellers and jump more into the lead process because I think that is a lot of what you guys are thinking is how do we convert leads at a higher, higher level. Converting leads at a high level means you've got to have a process in place. What I recommend is making sure that you have a lead sheet completed that you have that you can work with that's blank in front of you. Now, you could use technology to do it. I've always preferred having the paper lead sheets that I fill out while I'm talking because I can just write it down and then afterwards I'll enter it into whatever database that I'm using. I have a buyer lead sheet and I also have a seller lead sheet. The buyer lead sheet is extremely important because it has the seven important areas of lead conversion, the seven things that you really need to talk about during the um, lead conversion process. We're going to talk about location, where it is that they're moving. Price, what price range are you thinking about purchasing it? Motivation, out of one out of five, how motivated are you to purchase a property? That would include lead status. Are you thinking about moving in 30, 60, 90, or a year plus? Are you working with another agent? Have you been pre-approved for a mortgage? What home criteria are you looking for? And then, of course, we always end with, when can we get together? When can we close for the appointment? What's the best time to meet with you? I'm available tonight at 5 or tomorrow morning at 9. I'm more than willing to meet you at Starbucks, come out to your house, or I can invite you into my office. Which one would you prefer? The buyer information lead sheets and seller information lead sheets, of course, are in the, um, in the resources tab on the um, imsd.net uh, page. The seller lead sheets are the same thing. It has information about the property, how much they owe, how motivated they are. They are. I try to get all these questions answered or as much of them as I can prior to showing up to the listing appointment. I've been able to determine that I'm not willing to list a property even before I've gone out there by just spending some time on the seller information sheet so that I can save some time so I'm not actually driving for an hour or spending two hours with a client that isn't really motivated to sell. Having these lead sheets out is so, so important to your business. In my business, I made the 
buyer lead sheet green and the seller lead sheet yellow. It's just easier for me if I ever need to grab one that I know I just reach up there, grab the yellow one, and I can talk to a seller lead that's on the phone. We'll use this for canceled expires, radio calls, web leads, anything. And I make sure that my goal is to fill this out as much as possible. Sometimes your conversations are short and brief, so I keep this lead sheet, and as I continue to communicate by email, phone, chat, text with the different leads, I will continue to fill out the lead sheet. I know that by the time I have all the questions answered on, on the lead sheet, that person has become an appointment, and now they're an active client of mine. When talking about converting leads, we have a couple of major goals. The first thing of every conversation, every phone call, every scripts and dialogue, it's about building a relationship. At the end of the call, irregardless of what happens, I want to make sure that the person I'm speaking to likes me a little more. People tend to do business with people they trust and, trust and people that they like. Number two. My second goal is always to get an appointment. When can we get together? When can we get together to look at properties, to go through your needs? When can we get together to get you speaking to our lender? When can we get together to take a look at your home? It's all about getting in front of people. I do my best sales when I'm actually in front of people. I call it being on stage. Most of you on the call today, you are best when you're in front of a person. That's why you're a real estate professional. You just need to find faster ways to get in front of people so you can be on stage and do what you do. The third thing is not every communication, not every person ends up being a viable source of business in the immediate future. So I'm also always trying to get a referral. Every conversation, I'm going to strengthen relationships, I'm going to build rapport, I'm going to ask for an appointment. If that doesn't work, I'm going to ask who else you know might be interested in a good deal, bank on foreclosure, short sale, or getting their property sold. Every single conversation as much as possible. If you don't have enough leads, then most all of this becomes in vain. We need to make sure that you have a system in place to generate enough leads that will allow you to have enough people to call, email, or work every single day. Scripts and dialogues are going to be a little useless if you have nobody to say it to. The leads that I really care about are radio, an excellent source of uh, advertising for sellers for us. The internet, of course, we generate 1,500 to 2,000 buyer leads every single month from the internet. Flyers, the flyers that are on our sign post. Signs, the signs that are in front of our properties. We'll close 40 to 50 properties a year consistently from signs and flyers. Sphere, our friends and family. Prospecting, the cold calls, the canceled expires, the FISBOs, the circle prospecting, the call in the neighborhoods, the call in the notice of default list, those are the hard scripts and dialogues. Those are the tough ones. And then networking, and then of course active clients. Active clients is what we've been talking about for the last few minutes. So let's talk a little bit more about how do we generate business and what are the scripts and dialogues that we use when we're talking to these different sources of leads. our database. I'm talking about the Brian Buffini program in a box. I'm talking about all the different things that we can use to generate business from our friends and family, our past clients, the people that we already know. This should, at the very basic level, if you are a knucklehead agent, you should at least be able to get 18 to 24 transactions a year from following this plan if you're saying it enough times, you say the right thing and you have enough people to say it to. The database is interesting because it only takes 200 people to generate 24 transactions. That's it. You got 200 people. In fact, you probably do it with 120 because that's what I do it with. 120 people that I follow this plan, I generate 18 to 24 transactions. I call it my fun money. Those 18 to 24 transactions are what I use for my own personal spending, my own personal bills, my, uh, my Vegas money, so to speak, my hunting and fishing money. money. That's all my fun money. All the money that I generate from my team, that goes to paying the bills, build my business, investing in other things, buying new business, and so on. And we've just closed about our 475th property of the year. We're going to close over 500 by the end of the year, and we're somewhere about $105, $110 million in closed volume. I know that these systems work. It's why I want you guys to pay attention to it. Not that I you know, want you guys to necessarily you know, strive to sell 500 homes, but if you want to, it's easy. You can do it. Just follow the plan. 
pick whatever goal that you want that will give you the life that you want to live for you and your family, and let's implement some of these systems to get you there. The Get Your Sphere and Gear program is simple. It is the dumbest, cheapest, easiest thing that you can do to generate real business from a database of 100 to 200 people. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to email everybody in that database once a week. I email everybody on Thursdays because it gives me an opportunity to tell them what I'm doing this weekend. For instance, every Thursday they'll go out with a little bit of information about what's going on in the real estate market or a funny video or interesting facts or interesting article, and I'll remind them what I'm doing. Hey, we're hosting movies in the park this weekend. We do a lot of nonprofits here in Bellingham where we sponsor the outdoor cinema. Or we're going to the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. We're doing different charitable things that I always invite people to. If I'm hosting an open house, I'll say, FYI, I'm hosting an open house at 1234 Main Street. If you're in the area, I would love the company. Come by, bring me a coffee. It'll be fantastic. Everybody in my database gets a piece of mail every month. It'll be a handwritten card, a postcard, maybe even a letter. Every single person. If you had a database of 100 to 200 people, I'm talking about you investing 100 to 200 bucks in mail. That's your only hard cost from doing this. This is super easy. Uh, email every week, just to go back a step. If you guys want some cool tips, uh, oh, let me ask Julene, the real boss of my company. Julene, what's that new software called? Happy. Okay, we have this new software called Happy Grasshopper. It's hilarious. It works your sphere, your database for you. It'll send emails out uh, every three weeks for you, and it's relatively cheap. Then we supplement that with the Realtor Benefits email and the Realtor Benefits postcards, so they send all those things out for us free. And then we add our own weekly Thursday email. We mail everybody monthly. We call everybody monthly. So you take those 200 people that are in your database, you divide it by 20 work days. That's how many people you end up having to call a day. That's only 10 people. That's only 10 talk to's a day from your sphere to generate 18 to 24 deals. It's pretty easy. And then I try to visit three to four people, or visit everybody three to four times a year. How can I get in front of people once a quarter? Now that might be I invite them to our Christmas party. Sometimes we rent out the movie theater. We invite them to the nonprofit events we do in town, like the outdoor cinemas. Uh, the food drives we do, I find ways to get them involved in exciting things. We invite them to Red Day, which is the day that we go out there, and this year we rehab this, uh, um, this place that trains dogs for uh, veterans. Just give people an opportunity to volunteer and be with you. You don't even have to invite everybody to your house or to lunch or whatever. Just give them an opportunity to be in front of you. If you do this, you will generate business. Chad, are you on the call with me? I'm still here, Ben. Chad, let's talk about the Get Your Sphere and Gear script. Now, the problem with scripts and dialogues, Chad, is that when you say them, when you go through this kind of role play on the phone or we're teaching people scripts, it always sounds scripted. It never sounds scripted when you're actually making the phone call. It just kind of sounds funky this way. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to uh, memorize the scripts the way that I teach it. Then, once you've mastered it, you can use it in whatever order you want. So let's go through the Get Your Sphere and Gear script. Chad, are you ready? I think so. I, I like doing these things to Chad because I never tell him what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do. So <laughs> just, I just kind of throw him out to the wolves because I think it's funny. So Chad, you're just, you're just a friend and family. I'm just going to give you a call and I'm going to go right through the script. So just role play with me. And I just want you to say no every time I ask for a referral. Is that okay? You got it. That's easy. Okay. Hey, Chad, it's been a while. hope things are going good, blah, 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 blah. How have you been doing? Blah, 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 blah. Chad, would it be okay if I asked you a favor? Sure, it would be okay. Uh, I could really use your help. As you know, the real estate market has been a little challenging. I've been surviving because I get so much support from my friends and family and people like you. My favor is, Chad, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell real estate in the next 30 days. Can you think of anyone? No, I really can't, Ben. Okay, no problem, Chad. If if you did know somebody, would you feel comfortable referring those people to me? Sure, if I knew somebody. Okay. Sometimes we end up running across people at work or church or in different activities. I know you golf a lot, so um, maybe you'll run across somebody there. On average, MAR says that the average person runs across five people a year. So I appreciate the opportunity to uh, receive any referrals. And you know that I would treat your clients just like they're a family or your friends and I family, do. just like they're my family. Chad, I just want to remind you that I can help people buy bank-owned foreclosures, short sale properties, condos, land, commercial, 
business opportunities. Also, if you know anybody that lives in another state or that are moving outside of the area, I have a free program that I do for my friends and family like you where I'll interview the agents for them to make sure that they select an awesome agent in another area. So if you run across anybody in another town, you know, please let me know and I'd be more than willing to do that for you. And Chad, let me ask you another question. Is I know that you're in the plumber plumbing business. What can I do to help you in your business since you've been helping me and mine so much? Well, you could keep me in mind, and you could, of course, go break a pipe or two in your house. That'd be great. Would it would it be okay, Chad, if I referred you to my friends and family? Of course, I would appreciate that. Would it be okay if I sent you an envelope with some of my business cards, and I'll put another envelope in there with a stamp back to me? I'll send it out to you. Could you send some of your cards back to me? I would. That would be easy. Okay, perfect. Chad, I'm going to check in with you in a couple of weeks, probably next month, and make sure that we got our cards back and forth. And for some reason it doesn't happen, I'm more than willing to swing by uh, and just pick them up from you if that works, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so we have this conversation, and I might drag that conversation out through a five-minute role play where I am interspersing all different types of other information. But the concepts are, did I, did I say it correctly? Did I say, who do you know? in 30 days. So I'm making it time sensitive. I'm asking a specific question. Then I'm telling them what type of business that I can work, foreclosures, bank owns, condos, land, whatever. And then I'm asking him for help. Often I call with help first. Chad, I was just thinking, hello Chad, blah, 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 blah. We're having a conversation. Chad, I was thinking that you're in the plumbing business and I sell houses and a lot of our houses have plumbing problems. Would it be okay if I referred you out to my friends and family that needed my clients that needed blah, 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 and we go through the same conversation? And then if he says, yeah, I say, you know, can I ask you a favor? Would you be willing to do that for me, and could I send you some cards? And by the way, Chad, do you know anybody right now? Who do you know right now that's looking to buy or sell? You could always start with offering help in advance, and that's always the better way to do it. But I want you guys to master these little tiny scripts. because they become conversational. You can use them throughout the entire um, conversation. That might be a five or a 10 minute conversation. If you're worried about calling somebody like Chad, who's a chatterbox and going to talk your ear off, I always say, Chad, this is a script by the way. Chad, yes, I, was yes. just, I was just walking into a, into a doctor's appointment. I have a nasty rash somewhere. <laughs> and I have about five or six minutes before it started, and I was just thinking about you, not because of the rash by any means. I was thinking about you because I had a few extra minutes. I just wanted to call and see how you're doing. So that sets the standard right off the bat that all of a sudden we only have five or six minutes because I'm moving on to the next blah, blah, blah. The next piece of leads that I want to talk to you guys about, because I think this is major, major, major is prospecting for leads. And particularly, I'm going to talk about what are the scripts and dialogues that we use when prospecting a neighborhood. Now, I use this tool called Mojo Cells. The Mojo Cells creates this uh, circle around a particular geographic area. So I could go in there and put in 1234 Main Street. It's a, it's a listing that I just took this week. And I draw this circle on Mojo Cells, and it'll pull up all the phone book data of the people that live within that particular circle or, or that particular square. And it will give me all those phone numbers so I can go and call through and use my circle prospecting script. Chad, are you willing to role play with me? I don't even know if you need to say anything back. Just, just I'm willing here. to if I'm if I'm not a rash on strange parts of your body this time. Not anymore, Chad. You okay? We, we fixed that. All right. Uh, the circle prospecting script. Here we go. You can pick a pick an address around an address that you have listed or you just sold. So we're going to say a just listed call. Okay. Ready, Chad? Ready to rock and roll? I'm ready. Hello, is this Bob? Yes, it is. Hey, Bob, uh, this has been Kenny. This is just a quick courtesy call. As you may or may not have noticed, uh, I just listed the property at 1234 Main Street. You know uh, Frank that lives around the corner there? He had asked me to give all the neighbors a call and let them know that the properties came on the market and that the price is 389000 He also wanted me to let you know that we're hosting an open house this week, and a lot of times the neighbors like to see what improvements and what things have been done to the properties, and sometimes neighbors like to pick the 
their, their own neighbors in the future. So I wanted to personally invite you to come over to the house on Sunday between 1 and 3. I'll have cookies and milk and coffee and whatever else you want to eat or drink. Special requests are accepted right now. And uh, invite you over to the property to come see us. Do you think you'll be available on Sunday? I won't be available this Sunday, but thank you. Okay, well, if we do it again, I'll be more than willing to invite you. Chad, let me uh, just ask you one more thing. A lot of times when people go see homes like Bob's, see Bob's a three-bedroom house for about 1,500 square feet, sometimes people want a smaller home or they want a larger home, but they still want to be in this neighborhood. If I found a buyer that wanted to be in that neighborhood, but Bob's house wasn't exactly right for him, do you know anybody else in the neighborhood who's not currently on the market that would want to sell their home? Uh, I'm not sure. I think uh, the lady next door to us, she's been thinking about it because she's been kind of getting rid of a lot of stuff. That's a, it's a powerful way. If you do this and you call 200 people before your open house, you're going to get a couple different CMA requests at that open house. You're going to get sellers that tell you what neighbors are thinking about selling. You're going to get awesome rapport that you're the only agent in the world that took the time to actually call the neighborhood and work this thing like a business. You're going to generate massive amounts of business. Use the Mojo Cells dialer. It'll dial three people at a time, and it'll leave a message pre-recorded for them. It just says whatever you pre-recorded. It'll just leave it. So if they don't answer, it just leaves a message, and it only connects you to the people that actually answer. So you only have to have this conversation uh, with the live people. You can go through. We've made 46 dials in 13 minutes. This is uber powerful, and the Mojo Lead. Uh, lead store, the one I just showed you before that allows you to pick neighborhood numbers that are in the area, it is so powerful. It is so awesome. The next scripts and dialogues and systems we need to talk about are internet leads. Internet leads for us come from a variety of buckets. They come from uh, Craigslist, about a thousand leads a month. Blogs, we blog every single property that we list on Active Rain, and every agent out there should because it is a powerful way to get their listings at the top of the search engines and generate some awesome free traffic. We do pay-per-click ads on all of our listings. We bid on our MLS numbers and the address of every listing so those dogs at those national portals aren't stealing all of our leads and selling them to the other agents. We use search engines. We use social media, and we leverage the national portals, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and so on. Uh, whenever it's cost effective in our area to generate good solid leads. Once we generate the leads, we have to have a system in place. Many of you have known that we created a system called the 10 Days of Pain. The 10 Days of Pain is a lead conversion plan for internet leads because the National Association of Realtors says that the average buyer looks for 10 days prior to contacting an agent. And we don't know if we got that lead on day one or on day 10. What we need to do is make sure that if we generate an internet lead, we work that lead as hard as possible. My goal is to call that internet lead within a minute, leave a message, call that one at least once a day, contact that person at least once a day for 10 days. After that, we're going to call that lead once a week until they buy or they die. We're going to set up daily auto listing alerts that emails them listings every single day. We're only going to remove the person from our database once they've reported us to the police, purchased a home through us, or once they've actually deceased. And I'm being a little facetious because if people say, please stop emailing, of course, we subscribe them for a little while. We unsubscribe them for a little while. The Internet scripts are very interesting because an internet lead doesn't know you at all. So it is an absolute cold call. They might have even put their phone number on there on accident. They don't really know. You're going to have to find a way to build rapport. I want you to be witty, funny, and likable. Some of us, that's extremely challenging, like myself. I'm hard to like. So it takes a little bit of extra energy and emotion to really build rapport with somebody over the phone. If you can't build rapport and you can't get them to like you, just go back to the tried and true Best Buy script. It's the single best script I ever wrote. And that all you does have mean going into Best Buy, right, Ben? That, that's it all does mean going, to, going into okay, Best good. Buy, yeah. I love that store. Chad was talking about going to Best Buy at midnight on Thursday night because he loves that store so much, you know, the Black Friday day. Anyway, the Best Buy script, simply, you know, if you're on the phone, you're on email, you're standing next to Chad in the urinal, and you're like, hey, Chad, how you doing? He's, you can have this conversation with anybody. The Best Buy script, very simple. Chad, are you by, by chance interested in a good deal? 
Sure I am. The reason I ask is that I specialize in bank on foreclosures and short sale properties. And I have a list of the five best priced properties in Bellingham. Would that be something that you're interested in? Of course. Well, Chad, I have a printed version, and these are reserved for my, my clients that are really interested in buying today. I would like to have the opportunity to meet you in person. Could I bring that list out to your house, meet you at Starbucks, or would you like to come into my office? Which one works for you? Well, with the weather today, let's meet at Starbucks. Da, 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 da. We just go through the scripts and dialogue. Everybody says yes to the Best Buy script because you've asked somebody the simple question, are you by chance interested in a good deal? And they say no, they're stupid, just hang up with them. You don't want to talk to those people anyway. Well, the next type of lead you want to talk to are your signs and flyer calls. Signs and flyer calls are a huge, important part of our business. Almost 10% of our total sales, the 500 sales I'm going to do this year, came from a sign or a flyer. The sign or flyer system is simple. When somebody calls on one of our signs or our flyers, they call into a system that allows us to capture their phone number. This is extremely important. Because we want to make sure that when somebody calls on the number, that we can call them back. Not only about that property, once we list a new property in the area, we want to call the people back that called on the last property that didn't buy it and let them know about the new property. You can use a variety of systems. For years, I've been using Arch Telecom. Arch Telecom for 39 bucks a month or whatever they cost has made me hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, an extremely cheap tool. For those of you that are even cheaper than that, feel free to use a Google Voice number uh, because those are free. That will track all the people that have actually called on your signs or on your flyers. The difference is Arch Telecom will tell you what sign or what flyer they called on. Google Voice, unless you get a bajillion different Google Voice numbers, you won't be able to do that. Uh, Ring Central might be a nice alternative as well. When somebody calls on one of our signs and flyers, we get a text notification that somebody called to listen to our 1-800 recorded number. We call them back within one minute. If they don't answer, we call back again in one minute. If they don't answer, we call back again. The third time, we leave a voicemail. The reason that we call three times in three minutes is because nobody can avoid a call three times in three minutes. They're going to think the world is on fire. They're going to have to answer. After that, we're going to call that lead once a day for the first seven days. And we're going to call that lead once a week until they buy or they die. We only remove the contact from the database once they've died or they've deceased. An awesome script that you can use that I love using is extremely effective is Ring, ring. Hey, Chad. Hello, hey, Ben. Hey, Chad. Chad, Hello, are you ben. there? Chad, Chad, are you there? Yes. Chad, this has been Kenny at Keller Williams Realty. At some point in the past, you had called on the property 1234 Main Street. I understand that property wasn't a great match for you, but I thought I'd take the time to give you a call and let you know that a great property just came on the market up the street that's a bank owner foreclosure, and I thought you might be interested in a good deal. Can I ask you a couple questions? Are you still in the market for a home? We are still looking, yes. Okay. Are you interested in buying good deals like bank owns or foreclosure properties? Uh, yeah, as long as they don't have to fix up too much if they're a really good deal. Sure, sure. If I could get you into the home really before any other buyers have had a chance to go through there, would you be interested in seeing that property? I know it's right up the street from the one you called on it on uh, Main Street. Yeah, we'd be interested. Okay. And you just go through the process of when can we get together. Sign and flyer calls, you keep calling them at one point, one day, something's going to pop in their mind, and they're going to be ready to start talking to you. Signs are extremely effective if you give them reasons to call. Reasons to call, the top writer where it says listed by Ben Kinney, this is an old version of our sign. The new version on the top writer says, buy this home and I'll sell your home for free. Call the number for details. The reason I do that, because I want buyers that own a home right now that think they may not be able to afford to sell their home to still be interested in doing business with me. It's an awesome call to action. The next thing would be flyers. On flyers, we have a very specific tactic. Number one, we take the price off the flyer. Number two, we advertise 16 other properties on the back of the flyer. When we do this, it gives us 17 opportunities to sell a property at one signpost. You will generate a massive amount of leads from doing this. The script that you have to use with this one with your seller is, Mr. Ms. Seller, we have this marketing plan that allows us to increase the amount of sign calls you get by 20 times. What we do is we put your property on the back of 17 other flyers or signs across town in exchange for us being able to put other properties on the back of your flyer. 
we won't put any properties that directly compete with your property because we know buyers that stop might be looking at different price points or different sizes or different tastes. This is entirely an optional program, but no buyer or no seller has ever opted out of it. What do you think? They will all agree to do it. It's effective. Make sure that if you have a sign post up, that you make sure that you are leveraging that sign and that flyer. Open houses. Let's talk about the open house script that we use if we do not want to do one, because we need all types of scripts and dialogues. Scripts and dialogues for open houses, if you don't want to do one, is the National Association of Realtors says that the average, that out of all transactions closed last year, last year about 7% of all homes sold because of an open house. What I know to be true is that a majority of the properties that sold because of an open house sold uh, were new construction, condos, that type of projects. Although open houses can be effective, uh, for marketing properties, if you decide to do one, which a lot of our clients are opting out, I want to make sure that you take the time to lock away any sort of medications, personal paperwork, jewelry, and firearms, because sometimes people use open houses uh, as a way to um, uh, steal stuff. Now, of course, I'm always at the open houses, and I'll sit the entire time, but you get multiple people in there. Sometimes it is a concern. If you do not want to do an open house, I have what I call a 24-hour open house where I use videos and virtual tours to allow me to showcase your property just as if a buyer was in your home seven days a week, 24 hours a day. What, allows us to, what that allows us to do is it allows us to only show properties to qualified buyers that are actually interested in your property. And anytime they request, I will show your property seven days a week, morning, days, or evenings. For the most part, this will handle any open house objections that you get. Unless, of course, you want to do them and then tell them the 7 to 8% of homes sell from open houses. Print advertising is one of those scripts and dialogues that, one, you got to use a good script to convert a print lead into an actual person in your database. Number two, you got to be able to educate your sellers that print advertising is not an effective form of marketing and is expensive and will take away dollars from what actually sells properties. You need to be able to show them, and this is the slide that I show every seller, that if I took all these newspapers, stacked them on top of each other, put all the real estate books, Harmon Homes, and so on, that only resulted in 2% of the sales last year. Funny thing is that most agents spent 90 plus percent of their budgets on something that only resulted in 2% of the sales. Isn't that silly? By the time you say that, most sellers will decide that print advertising is archaic and the agents they're interviewing that are talking about it are also archaic and they're going to decide to work with you. If sellers are, are uh, committed to doing print advertising, here's the script. Our marketing plan covers all the areas of marketing that we feel will give us the highest probability of selling your home. If you would like to do print advertising, here's what I can do. I will design the ad. I will send the photographer out there. I will submit the ad into the newspaper, everything. We just bill you for that ad up front. Once the property sells, I will subtract any cost that you paid for marketing and print directly from the commissions that I charge. What I found is that most sellers, after they advertise for a week or two, and then they realize that nobody called or nobody came from it, they stop advertising those archaic methods just like I did. If you are doing print advertising, we do do some print advertising. The Real Estate Book, which is the single largest red print publication in the state of Washington, we advertise in. But when people call, you have to have a script in place. You have to have a system. Number one, I'm going to have the lead sheet in front of me. My first, first goal is going to be, hey, thank you. for Hey, Chad, you want to role play this one with me? I would love okay. to. Chad, I want you to say I'm calling about 1234 Main Street. Ben, I'm calling you about 1234 Main Street. Oh, not a problem. Chad, I'm actually walking through the hallway right now, so let me get to my computer. Uh, just in case I get disconnected, can I write down your phone number? I can call you back. Well, I just want to make sure that I have your phone number in case the phone disconnects. I'm almost to my computer. What's the quick number in case I get disconnected? 555-1212. Five, 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 one, two, one, two. Okay. Once I pull the information up, I'm going to up, be able to pull up tax records, additional photographs, virtual tours, all types of stuff. Would you like me to email that information to you as well? What email should I send oh. it to? Yeah, send it to me at uh, you know Chad's the greatest at gmail.com. Okay, Chad's the greatest at gmail.com. I got it. Hey, Chad, I'm just about to my computer. I'm pulling up the MLS. I got to log in. Let me ask you a question. What made you call about this particular property? Oh, my wife. She wanted me to find out more information about it. <laughs> Is that in the area that you guys are thinking about buying? 
Uh, yeah, she was out driving around. She saw it. She gave me a call and said to call you and find out oh. more about this home. Oh, that's great. Do you guys own a home already? We do. Is it currently on the market? It's not. We don't know if we're going to sell it. We might keep it as a rental. Well, I understand. You know, one of the things that could help you decide if you're going to keep it as a rental or, or sell it would be if you knew what your home is worth. Well, I, when I'm done pulling up this information, if you'd like, I'd be more than willing to give you a free CMA to tell you what your home is worth. Would you be yeah, interested that'd be in that? Great. Yeah, okay, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. After we're done talking, I'll make sure I get that information. Chad, a couple more questions. Have you been working with any agents at all? Uh, not yet. Okay. I see the price of this property is 279000 Is that a price point that you guys think you'd be interested in? It's a little bit higher than we were originally looking, but we could probably make it work if it's that nice on the inside. Okay. You know, all prices are negotiable, and it could be a big difference between how much you could sell your home for. If we could sell your home for a little bit more than you're thinking, that price might not even matter, right? Correct. Here's what I'd like to do, Chad. I'm only about 15 minutes away from this particular property. Do you think you and your wife would want to meet me out there and we could take a look at this home? Uh, my boss is pretty pushy, so I don't know that I can get off work right now. He's going to expect me to be here till about 9 o'clock tonight, so uh, we would have to set up a time maybe over the weekend. Okay, that'd be fine. Blah, 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 blah. Let's pick a time. Go for it. By the way, Chad, give me your address, and I'll make sure that I bring some comps to your area, and if you have time, I'll go view your home. Blah, 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 blah. You what I'm saying? So I get what you're saying. It, it's a script and dialogue where really the conversation is how do I fill out that lead sheet completely and how do I capture additional contact information. The same thing with open houses, the same thing with print advertising. My goal is to capture an email address and a phone number so I can work them over time. I can set them up on drips. I can email them a list of the best buy deals and so on. We're tying up the call here in about five minutes. I don't want you guys to go because I'm going to share with this this new idea that I have that I think is really good. And unlike the last call, I'm not even going to hang up on you. How many people were on that call last time? Yeah, that's a good thing. Right. <laughs> How many people were on that call last time? Type that into that uh, marker. Oh, okay, good. Nice to see you guys there. So, live events. This has absolutely nothing to do with scripts and dialogues, but I just came up with this idea because one of our team leaders shared it, and I thought it was brilliant. So I want to tell you what we're working on today. Live events. We're doing a Black Friday deal. You guys know where Black Friday came from? Black Friday came from is the day that they started calculating the holiday shopping season started, and that is the day that retailers started being in the black. Black is normally uh, considered profitable, whereas red is considered they're losing money. Black Friday for us means that for one day only, over 30 properties listed by our team will be 10% off to any buyer that's willing to make an offer close on the property and close by the end of the year. We use this as a way to build energy and excitement around a particular list of properties, get our sellers thinking about, would they reduce the price for one day if they knew it would sell by the end of the year? It also opens up the conversation in the future about what are they really willing to do. And it's a fabulous way to get some excitement and do some marketing. If I was in a situation like you guys on the call, I would rally my office and I would get a bunch of people to throw money in the piggy bank, and I would do advertising where you got 30 or 40 properties or 10% off for one day only, and you took over the market, and you guys dominated. It would be so awesome for your brain and for your market center, for your office and your community. The next type of live events that we're doing, we've talked about these before, but these are things like our amazing home race, where we invited buyers to show up at our office, and we gave them all Ben Kinney's amazing home race t-shirts, and they went and they viewed you know, 27 other properties in town. We had 425 people showed up. Our average listing got 200 people through it in one day. And at the end of the day, we gave away $10,000 cash to one buyer that answered the questions correctly about the homes. And we put this on through this company called Scavenger. SCVNGR, and if you guys ever want to do one of these events for yourself, ask for Alex at Scavenger. Uh, he's the only one that can authorize the use of the Amazing Home Race, which is owned by IMSD, that brand. But these Scavenger events are powerful, and I don't necessarily want to encourage you guys to give away $10,000 cash and do these big events, but what can you do to do open houses and do live events where you can generate a lot of energy? I found that most buyers would jump out of a window naked for an iPad. And if you had your inspector and your lender and your different community partners go in and all put in 50 bucks, you could easily give away an iPad once a month at your open houses as long as they went and they viewed five of your properties and they answered a question. 
you could start doing it your iPad weekend or your computer weekend or whatever it was where you give away a small prize in exchange for buyers going and viewing your particular homes. You can start building up some energy where on any given weekend you have 50 buyers going through five of your open houses answering cool questions and getting engaged. Above and beyond live events, you could start coming up with some scripts and some dialogues to invite people to come to your office to take classes. Classes we're currently offering are how to invest in real estate, first time home buyer classes, extremely powerful. Teaching agents how it's how important it is to write offers on REO properties. And the last class that we're teaching at our office is uh, social media. How to use social media for your nonprofit, for your business. Uh, for your own personal use because unlike the real estate industry, our local companies, plumbers and electricians and accountants and attorneys and restaurants and bars and coffee shops, they don't have access to the type of education that we do. So we just bring it into our office and we use it as a way to give back to our community. At the end, they see us as marketing professionals that are willing to share, that are giving back to the community and that's what we want. We've had a lot of questions throughout the entire call today about lead sheets and and additional scripts and dialogues. You know, probably a thousand of you people on the call today are already IMSD members. You need to go to the IMSD.net uh, webpage, log in, click on resources. You can download our lead sheets, our listing presentations, and of course you can take any of the classes. If you're not an IMSD member, I want to encourage you to join. One, because if you don't like it, you take the course, just call me, and I'll give your money back. I stand behind this. I sell real estate for a living. I do IMSD because it's a passion of mine. If you go to IMSD.net and you use the discount code, excuse me, you can save $225 off the IMSD designation. Normally we only discount it by $200 for calls, but we're going to do an extra $25. Call it a Christmas present to you guys. I want to encourage you guys to go out there, give IMSD a try. It'll teach you how to generate a thousand leads a month from Craigslist, how to build a social media marketing plan, how to optimize your website, how to do a listing presentation via iPad and what are the scripts and dialogues that you use, how to convert leads at a high level, what emails do you send, what things do you say, what, how to do paid advertising, what to pay for, what to not, how to blog, how to leverage active brain to generate a massive business. It could change your world upside down. I uh, want to thank Active Rain for being such a cool supporter of IMSD and for giving us an opportunity to support Active Rain because Active Rain has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. The blogs has changed my world. It's how I've SEO'd my entire uh, database of websites. So special thanks to everybody at Active Rain. Thanks, Chad and Chris, for being on the call. I'll see you guys all in the next one. This is IMSD, and we are signing out.